The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gipsky. Now for the third straight day, a suspected child killer who is considered armed and dangerous is still on the loose. There is no update on where Tyrone Johnson may be after he and David Palms escaped Lerdo Jail on Wednesday morning. Both men are accused of killing three-year-old Major Sutton in 2017. Court documents say Johnson kicked down the door to the boys' apartment in Bakersfield before he and Palms opened fire inside. Sutton was killed. His older brother and pregnant mom was wounded. On Wednesday, you may remember both men escaped Lerdo. Palms was tracked down and arrested in Shafter later in the day. We asked KCSO how the two managed to escape the maximum security wing of the county's pre-trial facility. All they are saying is the investigation remains active and they're looking at any potential structural and security failures within the facility. Officials say they will release details as they become available and as the investigation allows. If you've seen Tyrone Johnson, call 911. And looking ahead to this afternoon, it's a march to take back the neighborhood. The group Mothers Against Gang Violence is teaming up with other neighborhood groups for an event in Southeast Bakersfield to protest violence and crime in the community around Martin Luther King Jr. Park. That march begins at 3.30 on Potomac Avenue and King Streets, just outside of the historic Union Cemetery. And the route goes right up the street to California and King, the corner of MLK Park. Food and drinks will be served at the park following that march. Now, in your 17 court watch, deliberations continue this afternoon in the case of a Bakersfield attorney who was murdered in 2017. Nicholas Quintana has admitted to repeatedly stabbing Marcos Vargas after meeting him on a dating app, but Quintana testified he acted in self-defense. Yesterday afternoon, prosecutor Eric Smith wrapped up his rebuttal closing arguments, and the case went to the jury, who deliberated for about an hour before leaving for the day. Quintana is charged with first-degree murder, robbery, and manufacturing an assault weapon. Now, 17, 17's Jason Katowski has been following this case and has been live tweeting. We will also continue to update you if a verdict is reached today. All right, switching gears, Kevin Charette is out and about. He is at the SPCA to unleash your love. Kevin, tell us more. Well, good afternoon, Nicole. Yeah, we're at the SPCA. We started all this at 5 a.m. It is our virtual Unleash Your Love, so we're not actually at our studios where you can come down and adopt a pet today because of the times that we are in, but you can make a monetary donation, or if you are wanting to adopt a pet, you can go to bakersfieldspca.org, and you can see all the animals, and you can fill out an application. So that's bakersfieldspca.org. I want to bring in Julie Johnson, the executive director of the SPCA, and a big day for you guys. Talk a little bit about the money raised today and kind of how it's going to help the shelter. You know, every donation that it comes into our shelter stays local, is local, and is for the shelter and all that we do here. Um, you know, every animal before they're adopted has to be spayed and neutered. Um, we have a lot of expenses that goes into caring for the animals, all their food, um, all their vaccines, all of their, de you know, dewormers, all that stuff. So every dollar helps us do that and keep these doors open and keep us going to take in more pets. Now, if people want to make a donation today, what's the best way for them to do that? You know, the best way is go to bakersfieldspca.org. Go right online, bakersfieldspca.org, or call 323-8353. 323-8353. Perfect. And real quick, I mentioned the adoption process. Your doors are closed because of uh, the pandemic, yep. but uh, you have found that the easiest way, if you are interested in adoption, is going right to that website. You can fill out an application and your folks will then in return call them and schedule an appointment to come see the animal? Absolutely. So, you know, just know that some days we get like 50 to 60 applications on certain pets and everybody tries to get through them as quickly as possible, but it takes a minute sometimes. But that's really the best way, and that way you can see and uh, if the pet that you want is available and, you know, know a little bit more about it. All these dogs are so smart, and the folks here at the SBCA spend so much time with them while they're at the shelter. So many people think they just sit in a cage and that's all they do. No, they get interaction. Well, now to the severe drought covering most of California right now. State lawmakers are moving forward with a multi-billion dollar package to address the state's drought issues. Now, that $3.4 billion drought relief package cleared its first hurdle in the California legislature yesterday as lawmakers try to swiftly send it to the governor for approval. The effort unanimously cleared a Senate Budget Committee on Natural Resources. Now, Thursday's latest drought monitor released 
Numbers showing that 88% of the state is in a severe drought, with the entire state considered abnormally dry. Now that package will head to the Senate's full budget committee for approval. And as mentioned, Governor Gavin Newsom says he's not ready to declare a drought emergency across the state, but that's what local lawmakers are urging him to do. Yesterday, state lawmakers declared a regional drought emergency for much of the San Joaquin Valley, and they're calling on Newsom to issue the emergency statewide. They argue that the state is in a crisis and is in need of a statewide emergency declaration to allow for regulatory flexibility for water transfers. And as that weather continues to heat up here at home, we're starting to see more vegetation fires break out around town. Now, a fire broke out last night just after 11 p.m. off Panorama Drive below the Green Lawn Cemetery. The fire took several hours to extinguish. It was finally put out just after 2 a.m. this morning. No word yet on how that fire started. Now to our daily coronavirus update. Kern Public Health announced four new deaths today due to COVID-19. 1,353 lives have been lost to COVID-19 in Kern County since the beginning of the pandemic. Meantime, another 66 new cases were confirmed. Currently, state data shows 36 people are in the hospital with the virus. Six people are in the ICU. And a reminder, anyone 16 years old and up is eligible for the vaccine. The vaccine site at the Kern County Fairgrounds is still operating from Wednesday through Sunday, 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the vaccine hub at CSUB is still accepting appointments through May 14th. To sign up for an appointment at these or any of other locations around Kern County, head to the state's website, myturn.ca.gov. You can also call that number on your screen, 833-422-4255. Well, right is is expanding their COVID-19 vaccinations to all locations across the country. Starting today, coronavirus doses will be administered to more than 2,500 sites across 17 states, including California. Rite Aid is offering the Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson Johnson vaccine. Anyone 18 and older can schedule an appointment by heading to RiteAid.com slash COVID-19. Walk-in appointments are limited. And Kerr Public Health wants to answer all of your questions about the vaccines. The department launched a COVID-19 vaccine nurse hotline that you can call to get your questions answered. It's available from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. That number is 677-4177. You can call or text. Clinica Sierra Vista is now offering rapid COVID-19 testing and COVID-19 vaccinations. Call 833-278-4584 to make your appointment. But don't delay. Clinica Sierra Vista, putting patients first. Taking a look here at home, after 30 years of service to our community, one of Bakersfield's fire's own is retiring. Now, Chief Trevor Martinison is hanging up his badge. Chief Martinison started his career in 1990 with Cal Fire, then went over to BFD in 1991. He has been promoted multiple times throughout his service. Now he has been serving as the Deputy Chief of Operations. During his career, he spent several years in training, developing programs, instructing Cal Chief Ops and COVID-19 lead, as well as a key player in the development of our, their wellness program. Wow. 30 years, what an amazing, amazing opportunity to, uh, to serve the citizens of Bakersfield. I, I truly feel very blessed um, to be leaving this profession, um, loving it as much as I did 30 years ago. The chief even dedicated hundreds of hours on the Byrne Foundation and Relief Association. The entire BFD community says they want to thank him for his 30 years of service to the community, and we want to wish him the best of luck on his retirement. Taking a look ahead, local craft breweries in Bakersfield and Kernville are teaming up to signify the importance of the Kern River to the community, and they're doing it with a coordinated beer release. The breweries participated, are participating in the Thirsty for a River event, and they will have a limited supply of Bring Back the Kern glassware that will be given away free with purchases of one of those new beers. More than 2,000 glasses will be given away, along with a limited supply of Bring Back the Kern stickers. Now the beer release starts tomorrow, May 1st. For a full list of the breweries taking part in the event, visit KGET.com. Well, we're about a month away from Memorial Day, and if you want to go camping that weekend in Kernville, you'll need a permit. The old Gold Ledge Campground is requiring the permits to limited the number of people who are frolicking to the campsites during the most busy time of the summer, Memorial Day, 4th of July, and Labor Day weekends. The permits are free and will be chosen by lottery. Officials say permit 
request must be received by today, no later. For more information, head to our website, kget.com. Well, if you need something to satisfy your sweet tooth, then Teen Challenge has the treat for you. The local nonprofit is continuing with their Spring Eats curbside drive through fundraiser. They have everything from pulled pork sandwiches to their peach dumplings. They also have some new items that include strawberry dumplings and a strawberry chicken spring wrap. The event happens every Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. at 301 East Roberts Lane through the end of May. And for more information, you can head to our website, kget.com. And the happiest place on earth is set to reopen today after being shut down for more than a year. Disneyland and Disney's California Adventure Park are opening their doors to the public for the first time in 411 days. That's the longest closure in the park's 66 year history. Disney says no, not all of the rides and dining experiences will be open and parades and nighttime spectaculars have been put on hold. Also, two methods used by bypass lines have been paused temporarily. You can't choose the fast pass or single rider option. Disney also noted on its website some experiences may be modified, limited in capacity and subject to availability or closure. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.